Hi, welcome back. Today I am accessorizing with some giant bags under my eyes. It's been a little while since I did a book haul on this channel. I think my last book haul was maybe my birthday book haul back in March or April. And I have acquired quite a number of books since then. So I felt like maybe this video was a little bit overdue. And I wanted to do something kind of easy and quick today because um, I'm try still trying to get back in that filming mojo. It's been, it's been kind of rough. I started a new job at the beginning of September and I think I kind of underestimated how tiring it would be to start a new job because I'm obviously like training in a different kind of position and I'm learning a bunch of new things and I'm interacting with new people and I'm doing all this stuff. So yeah, filming has not been really working for me. I've I just haven't had the energy, but today I have the energy. I'm waiting on Cole to cook dinner, so I thought I would come in here and just do a quick little book haul. Actually, it probably won't be that quick because I have, like I said, a lot of books to talk about. So I have 21 books to talk about today. It's a little bit excessive for me. I don't usually buy a ton of books. I've been trying not to buy a ton of books for the last couple of years. I've been trying to keep my buying down, but I think because of COVID, uh, I've needed a lot more like retail therapy than than normal. So yeah, I've acquired quite a number of books and sadly I've only read a handful of them. So I have a lot of books going on to my TBR now. It's okay, I'm getting ready to do a huge unhaul. I'm thinking about making a kind of a video series unhauling a bunch of books off my shelves. So I'm not actually that worried about all the books going on in my TBR. And honestly, I, I don't even really feel guilty about adding a bunch of new books to my TBR when I have so many unread books on my shelves. I just feel like people always tend to justify their book hauls for some reason. And so I think I've just gotten into a habit of justifying them when in reality, I mean, it's my money and I'm gonna keep buying books if I want to, but I usually don't buy this many this close together. And also I guess I haven't done a book haul in a while, so it seems like there's a lot more than usual. I'm gonna stop talking and just actually talk about the books now. So let's do that. It's actually been so long that I don't really remember when I got all of these books or where I got some of them from. So I'm just gonna pick them up off the pile and talk about them as I get to them. And maybe as I'm talking about them, I'll remember where I got them from. Who knows? I'm gonna start with the handful of books that I have already read because then I can direct you to other videos where I have already talked about these books, so I'm not going to go into detail. Starting with the first three books in the Girl Meets Duke series by Tessa Dare. These are the historical romance books that I read for The Reading Rush, I think, and I just got so addicted to the series and then I like reread them even after The Reading Rush and then I lent them to my mom and she read them and now I have them back and I'm finally hauling them. I can direct you to the Reading Rush vlogs where I talk about all of these books in great detail, or I can direct you to my very long, like 50 minute summer wrap up where I actually kind of review these books in maybe a little bit more depth. Um, but yeah, I love these. They're historical romance, they are companion novels, and I am anxiously awaiting the fourth and final book in the series, which is coming out in February. If you have not read historical fiction before and you are looking for a place to start, um, Although I'm new to the genre myself, I feel like this is an excellent place to start. So give them a try if you want. I also have all three books in the Folk of the Air trilogy by Holly Black, starting of course with The Cruel Prince and The Wicked King and The Queen of Nothing. This is a very popular YA fantasy series. If you haven't heard of it, uh, I'd be surprised if you haven't read it. I'd be surprised. I decided to read it earlier this year and I really really enjoyed it and I bought the like Barnes and Noble exclusive editions which are these like beautiful black covers and I really enjoyed the series. I made a whole vlog of me like reading and reacting to the events of the series. It is filled with spoilers so if you haven't read the trilogy before and you plan on reading it I wouldn't necessarily recommend watching it but if you have and you want to know my thoughts about the trilogy then I'll leave a link to that down in the description and you can go and check it out. It's one of my favorite videos that I filmed so far this year because I just had a blast like binging the series all in a week and uh that's that. If you haven't heard of this or read it you know I'm, I'm not going to go into detail about this series. You know it. I love it. If you haven't read it I de definitely recommend it. I do remember where I got this next set of books. I went to Books A Million and they were having a like buy to get one free on all their paperbacks or on a selection of their paperbacks so I indulged in that a little bit um, and I also picked up a an additional book that was in the clearance section and that was Permanent Record by Mary H.K. Choi. This is the second book by Mary H.K. Choi or this is her second book. I read her first book Emergency Contact last year and I loved it. It was one of my favorite books of 2019. Cannot recommend that book highly enough and I have been really interested in checking out her newest book. This came out I think maybe it might have come out 
this year or it might have even come out last year. I don't really remember. Time does not make sense to me right now. This is about a boy. I believe he is living in New York City and maybe he just recently dropped out of college or he's planning on dropping out of college and then one night he meets a like pop star at the bodega in his neighborhood and they strike up a friendship slash potentially romance. I don't really know much more about it beyond that, but um, I've heard really good things. I love the cover. I also really love the naked cover. I mean, it is just one of the coolest covers I've ever seen. And I am excited to read this at some point, hopefully soon. And then as far as the buy to get the third free, I picked up The Cheerleaders by Kara Thomas. This is a YA mystery thriller all about a town where there was a group of cheerleaders that all happened to die in the same year, I think. Uh, one of them maybe committed suicide, one of them was killed in a car accident, something along those lines. And I believe that this book follows the sister of one of those girls as she kind of starts to think that maybe there was something weird going on with this group of girls and so she decides to figure out what exactly happened to all these cheerleaders. I've never read anything by Kara Thomas and I've heard really good things about her books in the past and this was on the buy to get the third free so I decided to pick it up. It's also relatively short and I usually tend to read mystery thrillers pretty quickly especially if they are YA so I'm excited to get to this one eventually. A book that I'm really excited about, have been excited about since I first heard about it, and then I, I guess I recently saw somebody review it and just rave about it, and that is The Farm by Joanne Ramos. This I believe is like an adult dystopian kind of or maybe it's set in our world but there's like speculative element to it I'm not really sure I think it follows a woman who is like contracted to go to this farm where women have babies for families who can't have babies of their own or something along those lines and then I think that maybe she figures out that there's something weird going on here and so she tries to get away and then can't and it turns into a a thing. I don't obviously really know that much about it. I haven't read the back of it, honestly, but I've heard such great things about it. I didn't know that it had come out in paperback and I absolutely love the paperback cover. So I am excited to read it, as I've already said, and I'm hoping to get to it soon, as I've already said about every other book, or at least the two other books that I've hauled so far in this video that I haven't read. Yeah, I think it's gonna be good. I've heard such good things about it, so maybe I'll get to it soon, hopefully. And then the last book I picked up that day was Little Women by Louisa May Alcott. This is obviously a classic. The movie came out at the end of last year and everybody loved it and so I think like 800 new editions of this book came out and I saw this particular edition at Books A Million and I really love the cover. I love anything with flowers on it. If you know me, you know I am a floral bitch and this is stunning and it was also only ten dollars and then of course you get like the third free or whatever so I think this is the book I got for free and I uh yeah I can't wait to read it I've read like I think an abridged version of Little Women in the past I don't think I've ever read like the actual story but I have always loved the 1994 movie with Winona Ryder and I absolutely loved the newest one with Saoirse Ronan so now I actually want to read the book and compare all of my thoughts and feelings about the movies to the book which I've heard is even better than both of the movies so maybe eventually I'll get around to reading this. <laughs> the next book I have to talk about is a book that's not actually technically mine. I borrowed it from an old co-worker and then as I said I got a new job and I left my old job and I left my old co-workers and I told her that I would try to get the book to her at some point because she'd lent it to me a while back and then she said oh, I've already read it I probably won't read it again so you can just keep it and so uh, I have it and that is The Nickel Boys by Colson Whitehead. Colson Whitehead is of course the author of The Underground Railroad which got a lot of criti critical acclaim a couple of years ago. I think it won like the Pulitzer Prize or the National book award or something and this is his newest book which came out I believe at the beginning of the year or maybe late last year and it is about a man who when he was a kid he was sent to like a detention facility for stealing I believe and then like all these years later um they start to uncover a bunch of secrets about this facility where he was sent. And it brings up a bunch of memories from his time there and a bunch of things start coming to light. And I think that they all kind of have to deal with the um, ramifications of some events that happened in the past and the present. And uh, my coworker liked it and a bunch of other people seem to like it. And so I am excited to read it. It's really short. So I think I could actually read it quickly. I'm not 
I'm not sure why I haven't read it yet, honestly, because she lent it to me so long ago. The next few books, I also remember where I got them from because when I went for my like bachelorette trip weekend, we went to this like huge used bookstore in Nashville, Tennessee, and I picked up a few books there because they were really cheap and I couldn't resist. And so I got The Female Persuasion by Meg Wolitzer. Let me see if I can get this sticker off. I don't even remember what the store was called. Oh, it's right here. Uh, McKay Books. It's just like this giant giant building that had a bunch of books and video games and music and stuff and it was really cool. I have never read a book by Meg Wolitzer although I think this is the second book of hers that I own because I also own The Interestings which I haven't read yet but I believe this is about a girl who goes off to college and she has this like really solid relationship and then she meets a woman who is just kind of like enigmatic and teaches her all of these like feminist thoughts and then she kind of I guess kind of maybe gets obsessed with this woman. I don't actually really know. I've heard mostly good things about it although I haven't heard a ton about it in general so I don't really know how I'm gonna feel about it but I really like the cover which is always a great reason to buy a book. Meg Wolitzer just in general gets a lot of I don't know um What's the word I'm looking for? I don't know. She gets a lot of buzz, I guess. So I'm excited to read it eventually and also the interesting at some point. Okay, I tried to take the sticker off this next one, but it started ripping, so I'm gonna have to be a little more delicate about it. But I picked up Fingersmith by Sarah Waters, who is a historical fiction author that everybody seems to love. I think she writes a lot of like lesbian fiction as well. Like I think she's pretty well known for historical female female relationships, which I'm here for. So I don't actually know anything about this book at all, just that I I think it features a female female relationship and it's historical fiction yeah for sure it's set in london 1862. i also love these editions of her books because first of all they're super floppy and they just feel nice and also it only cost me two dollars and fifty cents you can't read that but i can and i love it when books only cost me two dollars and fifty cents and finally from that store i got the child finder by renee denfeld renee denfeld is the author of the enchanted which is a book that i read I don't know 2016 2017 and loved it was like it's one of my favorite books I still think about it all the time and I haven't read anything else by her and I think she's published two or three more books since that book came out this is about a woman who I think is really good at finding missing children I don't know if it's like there's like a speculative element to it where she's got some kind of like ability to locate children or if she's just really good at her job but this is about a woman who can find missing children and then I think maybe she doesn't find one one time or she doesn't find a child in time and the child ends up dying and so she like leaves the business or whatever and then something happens and she gets pulled back in and if i'm not mistaken this is actually the first book in a series following this child finder so if i like this obviously i think there's more books featuring this main character i think this one has a little bit more of like a mystery aspect to it rather than like just straight like literary fiction like the enchanted did although that one does have like I don't know a little bit of like a mystery but not it's not like a straight up mystery like you're trying to solve something it's more just like you're trying to figure out what exactly is going on whereas in this one I think it's more like more mystery mister miss mysterious why did I glitch when I said that yeah I'm excited to read it I loved the enchanted for like the writing and the way that she wrote the characters and just I don't know like just the story in general so I'm sure that I will enjoy this one as well and uh, hopefully I'll get to it soon also this one I think is gonna be a great winter read because there's literally snow on the cover like the trees are covered in snow so maybe I'll hold on to this one until like November December next up I have normal people by Sally Rooney which I believe I picked up at an Amazon bookstore again on maybe that bachelorette trip I think that's when I got this one. This is like, I don't know, all over booktube. It's uh, everywhere. Like everybody's been reading it. Everybody's been loving it. It came out last year and it got so much hype when it came out. Sally Rooney just in general has been getting a lot of hype because her last, like her first two books, Conversations with Friends and this one, just like were so well received. And then I think even maybe Hulu made a, an adaptation of Normal People, which then got it even more buzz. And for some reason, I still haven't read it. So I'm gonna do that at some point. This is about two people. They are in a relationship with each other and when they're in like high school, one of them is like really shy and the other one's really outgoing. And then when they get to college, the roles kind of flip and the one that was outgoing is now like kind of shy and doesn't want to be involved. And the one that was super outgoing or this one that's super shy is now like really outgoing and popular. And I think it's just about them like trying to figure out if they want to stay together, like the ins and outs of a relationship. It seems like it's gonna be like a coming of age, you know, one of those like millennial fiction type of books. I guess this, this is kind of like the quintessential millennial fiction type of book. And because so many people have read and loved it, I think I'm also going to love it. But 
we'll just have to wait and see. A book that I've talked about and shown on my channel a few times but still haven't read is The Vanishing Half by Britt Bennett. I have talked about that I read and loved The Mothers a few years ago and this is her newest release which has been getting so much hype, so much buzz on booktube. It's been out for a couple months now so maybe the hype has died down for it a little bit but I'm still very excited to read it. It's about two sisters who grow up in this black community but they are both white passing, they're very light skinned and then as they grow up I think one of the girls decides to live as a white woman and her family doesn't even know that she's black and then the other one decides to marry a very dark skinned black man. I think it's just about these sisters, their relationship. I think it even follows the perspectives of their daughters at some point and it's just all about them dealing with their identity in their lives. Like I said, I've heard great things about it. I've been excited to read it for months and months and I just still haven't gotten around to reading it. But I'm hoping to soon. We'll see if that actually happens. Next up, I've got One to Watch by Kate Stamen London. This is a book that's been getting a lot of buzz and hype lately because it just came out and I think maybe it was a book of the month selection or a couple book clubs read it or something. I don't really remember. But it's about a plus size woman who has always been very critical of the, like this world's version of The Bachelor about Bachelorette. It's called Main Squeeze. And then one day a post that she made goes viral and so the producers of the show ask her to be the first plus size lead and she is. And it's all about her like dating all these guys and kind of coming to terms with who she is and finding love. And I'm excited to read it. I've heard such good things about it and I think it's gonna be really good. I just need to, I just need to read it now. So maybe I'll do that soon. I've said that for every single book, haven't I? I can't read all these books soon, but hopefully I will. We'll see. Next up, I've got The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern. I bought this at Target not too long ago because it was on sale. And this is Erin Morgenstern's newest book that got so much hype and buzz when it first came out. And so many people like loved it and I just knew that I was gonna love it too. And so I finally decided to buy it, even though I'm not actually the biggest fan of the cover, the this cover. I like the, like the hard bag cover of it but I don't know if this is like the Target cover or if it's the actual paperback cover. It's very shiny so that's annoying. You can see my ring light. I don't really know what this book is about to be honest. I just know that it's supposed to be amazing. I loved The Night Circus so I'm, I'm excited to read something else by Erin Morgenstern. It's been a while since The Night Circus came out like I don't know like eight or nine years or something so this book has been like very much anticipated by a lot of people for a long time and I think it's a book about books which I love. So um, yeah I got it. I'm gonna read it and I hopefully I will love it. Like I said I loved The Night Circus and I loved The Night Circus for the writing style and for the characters and so I'm hoping that I will love this book for the writing style and the characters. I believe this one also features a male-male relationship which I'm excited about reading. So can't wait to get to it. Maybe I'll do it soon. Next up is the book that I'm currently reading. I've been currently reading it for a while and it's because I actually haven't <laughs> picked it up to read in a week or something and that is American Royals by Catherine McGee. I got this one at Target or actually Cole bought this one at Target for me because I was reading it in the book aisle while I was waiting on him and then he was like I'll just get it for you. It's an alternate history type of story about what would happen if George Washington had become king of America instead of president and it follows the current generation of American royals, the Washington family royals and um, it follows a couple different perspectives. The main ones being like the two princesses of the family but also a couple of their friends as well and I mean I'm only like five chapters in but so far I'm really enjoying it and hopefully I'll actually get a chance to pick it up and read it soon but yeah, I'm excited. I've heard good things about it. I think the sequel to this book just recently came out, which is also a huge motivator to get to it soon because I'd like to finish off the duology or continue on in the series. I'm not actually sure what the series is, if it's just two or gonna be three or whatever. But yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try to read it. I'm gonna try to finish it soon. We'll see if that happens. Next up is another book that is on my September TBR that I haven't read, finished, whatever, started at all yet because uh, I haven't been reading and that is The Fountains of Silence by Ruta Sepetys. This is a historical fiction YA book. It's set I think during the Spanish Revolution but I'm not, actually not 100% sure because I haven't read the synopsis of it at all. I just know that I have read and loved all of Ruta Sepetys books in the past and so I'm sure that this one will be no different. It's quite a bit longer than her other books but I guess that's just more pages for me to fall in love with the characters. Also apparently I got bookmark. Oh yeah, I got this one at the Amazon bookstore as well. So that's why there's a bookmark in there. But yeah, excited to read this one hopefully soon. 
fingers crossed. Actually, I'm hoping to read this one before the end of the month because it is, like I said, on my um, book Oplathon TBR. I just haven't been able to actually read any at all because of all the aforementioned reasons. And finally, the last book in this massive book haul is King's Bane by Claire Legrand. This is the sequel to Furyborn, which I read and loved earlier this year. It is still one of my favorite books that I've read so far this year. I just absolutely devoured that book back in April. And now I finally have my hands on the sequel, which is pretty thick, but I'm so excited about this book and I'm actually hoping to read it this month or next month because the third and final book in the trilogy comes out in October and I'd like to be able to just finish this trilogy off before the end of the year. If you don't know, this is a YA kind of leaning into adult, maybe like new adult fantasy series all about this world where there was this prophecy stating that there would be two queens rise, a blood queen and a sun queen. The blood queen would destroy the world and the sun queen would save it. And the series follows two women in two completely separate timelines. The first is Riel. She is set like way in the past and she is believed to be the Sun Queen. She has some magical abilities and the people think that she is there to save them. And then the second timeline is set like a thousand years in the future or like a thousand years after Riel's timeline. It follows Eliana as she starts to discover exactly who she is. She's kind of like a hired thug for the Empire and then one day she meets a man who makes her question exactly who she is and where she stands in this impending war. Like I said, I absolutely loved the first book and I'm really excited to continue on with the series and so I'm definitely going to try to read Kingsbane in September or at least in October because uh, like I said, I want to finish the trilogy this year so I need to continue on. So those are all the books that I bought since my last book haul. I think, I don't think I'm forgetting any. If I am then I'll just talk about them in my next book haul. Who knows when it'll be? Hopefully not too soon because I have so many books now to read that I don't need to buy anymore. But as we've already discussed, I like buying books and I'll probably continue to do it no matter what. So it is what it is. Let me know down in the comments if you've read any of the books that I mentioned in this video and what you thought about them. Which of these books do I need to get to sooner rather than later? I'd really love to know. Also, which of these books would you like to hear my thoughts on? I'd really love to know that as well. Would you like me to do like individual reviews or whatever for any of these books? I'd love to know that. And let me know some books that you bought recently or maybe the books that you're most excited to read soon. I'd really love to know that as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video and I will see you again very soon. Bye!